Okay, now we're at the actual indicator installation phase, and uh, you're going to have two files, of course, which are your uh, local time axis MQ4 and your local time axis DLL. You're going to find your directory uh, for your MetaTrader in the brokerage that you're using. Um, one thing again to take note of is, for some reason, if you're using Interbank FX, they love putting their folder, their directory, right in the upper level of your C drive, whereas most other MetaTrader brokers or brokers that are using MetaTrader, they put it in the program files, which is normally where these types of things go. But I don't know why IBFX is different. So they go crazy trying to find it. If you've never done any indicator installations from, yeah, for IBFX, um, you'll see I have um, FXDD in here. I've got some Alp Alpery, some Gallant. Any broker I've ever used seems like uh, they put it in the uh, in the C uh, program files um, with a little x86 there. Um, afterwards. I think some of the older versions of Windows doesn't use that x86, it's just in the straight program files. But anyway, find your broker directory, go ahead and click it, open it up, you're going to go to the experts directory, and inside that are the two directories we want to go to, one of which is the indicators, and so you're going to open your indicator folder or directory up, and that's where you're going to paste your main, the local time axis file, I've already done so, you can see it, it's right there, .mq4, uh, you have no need for the uh, .ex4, uh, you've obtained the mq4 right there, put it in there, and then back off of the the indicator directory, in other words, you can go ahead and click up at the top there to the experts uh, in your um, your uh, uh, file path bar up there, and then go and open libraries, and that's where you're going to place local time access dot DLL. Okay, if your MetaTrader is running, you need to close it and reopen it. It doesn't hurt it to put files inside the directories while it's running. You just can't see them until you close or reopen it. If you're following the directions, it would have had you close it initially anyway. So go ahead and open your MetaTrader program, your MetaTrader platform. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Open mine. I've already gone through the shutdown reopen process, and you will see your local time axis right there in the customs section, custom indicator section uh, of the indicators. Of course, if you just go to the straight indica indicator section, those are just the generic out of the box indicators, about 20, 25 indicators that come with MetaTrader. You want to go down to the custom indicator section, and again, that's where you'll find your local time axis. Open a chart that you want to apply the local time axis to, uh, unless you already have one open, of course. Select that chart. Now, whatever chart is selected is the one. If you double click on the indicator you want to apply, it'll go onto that chart, or you could just drag it onto a chart and it'll select that chart which you have it um, held over and then it'll bring you right to the customization box and release or double click it. Okay, typically it opens to this uh, commons tab but we're going to just jump into the inputs tab. Okay, uh, time hour shift, that's just something that, uh, that's GMT, the zero of course stands for uh, Greenwich Mean Time. So uh, whatever relationship you are to Greenwich Mean Time, uh, mean time you'll want to change here. So um, uh, most of us are, <laughs> are, are um, later so you would put a negative um, number in here. Now I know where I'm at in the Pacific standard time in the United States, I'm about eight hours behind during winter months. So I would put a minus eight in there. If it was in New York, I'd subtract three from that, or I should say add three from to the hat, and it's going to be minus five, and et cetera, et cetera. You can go all the way to uh, uh, 23 hours, which is going to catch you uh, all the way around the globe, but you can figure it out from there. I'm sure you've been dealing with this already, pulling your hair out, because of the way the Medicare platform is. You have to calculate what your local time is if you want to look at the lower time zones that's on the chart. So I'm going to put minus eight there. Bar interface. So First of all, let's just go ahead and apply it to the chart, then I'm going to go ahead and customize Okay, so you click OK, and give it a few seconds. It takes a few, sometimes maybe up to 10, 15 seconds initially for the indicator to register with the security server, at which point you'll see a little orange lock on the padlock um, show up in the top right corner. Um, sometimes the indicator will show up even before that happens, but it won't really start to work fluently uh, until that lock shows up, and uh, your indicator will show up on the bottom. All right, so uh, I'm going to show you uh, the standard input uh, selection. Uh, options here, and then I'm also going to show you a couple idiosyncrasies about the, the indicator that I want, I want you to get to uh, surprise that if they happen. Um, so let's start out. Let's go ahead, go ahead and open up the indicator. Right click on the chart and select it. There you go. Okay, so we have, uh, I've already shown you the time hour shift. Bars interval. This is basically the spacing between the texts uh, that shows up. Uh, if you just notice down below here, the spacing that's there, let's say I want to decrease that a little bit. You'll just change this to a lower number. So I'm going to say 9. I'm going to click OK. Watch how that's going to go closer together down there. And this probably wasn't a good. Um, example because I didn't change it a lot, but let's go ahead and change it a little bit more. Let's say uh, uh, five, or six, I'm sorry. I don't want to go too close for reasons I'm going to explain to you here. Okay, notice how they're kind of crammed on top of each other there, right? Well, you don't want that. So you want to get a good uh, spacing that works for you. Not too close, not too far. Now keep in mind, or I should say, just be aware, it doesn't matter once you set the spacing if you change uh, the chart that you have, whether it's in minutes or hours or days, uh, that, that, ch that spacing is going to remain the same, which is kind of nifty. You don't have to worry about that always changing on you. So get a good Spacing though that you can work with. Okay, so there you go. That's a nice spacing. Now let's go ahead and go down the list of the rest of our uh, customization. Um, the time mark shift. This little vertical little blip right there, which is above the two. That's kind of how the stock out of the box indicator looks, right? They put the little time marker off to the left. Frankly, myself, uh, I tend to like it on center or even uh, to the right. I'm gonna the zero puts it on center. Notice how the little blip there now is on center. Or you can even go to the right. 
and so you're going to go negative when you want to move it to the right. So I just put in a minus 3. Watch that time marker. Notice how it moved over to the right. So you can uh, customize that wherever you'd like to see it. Personally, I like it almost hard right over here because that's the bar that's forming, right? So it's going to tend to line up with the, with the right side. The beautiful thing is wherever that mark is, the time you're seeing relates to that mark. All right? So if I moved that where it was a few minutes ago to the left over the 28, well, that time is relating to that bar, which is directly above it. So um, uh, that's your reference point. Okay, so now we've got the... We've got the time hour shift, we've got the bars interval, we've got the time mark shift, and then of course the standard font size. Uh, I've tried to default it uh, again out of the box to the size of the miniature platform itself, but you can go ahead and of course make that anything you want. Um, let's go ahead with the 9, and while we're at it, uh, I have the font the color gray, but again if you want to make it the, the jump out, let's go ahead and put that green, and it's going to be a little bit bigger in green now when it shows up. Okay, this actually helped me to get right into one of the idiosyncrasies. It took a little while, by the way, to register, but notice how when the, when the text is bigger, you know, it's going to tend to be, on, uh, um, you know, crammed a little bit. So you're going to want to go a little bit more more spacing. So I change that from 11, from a 9 to let's say a 12 there. And then you're going to see the spacing is going to be much more appropriate. Okay, it takes a little bit of time uh, again for that lock. And there you go. So um, spacing is a little bit better and uh, the font's a little bit larger there. Now, what are some of the idiosyncrasies? I'm going to go ahead and close my indicator file here so I can show you some stuff. Now, when the indicator kind of just gets applied initially, you're going to see it's going to be spaced like this. You know, So you'll want to take your uh, cursor, put it right over that horizontal line and bring it down. So that's not taking up undue space. Now I'm going to go back to the indicator, and I'm going to shrink that font back down a little bit, because frankly, I personally don't use it with big uh, letters like that. I like to see it exactly like the miniature platform. And I'm going to change it to white, because that's, again, typically what the platform defaults to. But I think I didn't go small enough on my uh, type size there. Let's see what we got. Still not small enough. Okay, but you get the idea <laughs> what your... Uh, oh, I see what I did talking and I'm not thinking. All right. I'm sorry, I'm off the screen here, I realize. You're not seeing what I'm doing. Let's move that over there. Okay, this should work now. We have a font size of 7, which I think was my default font size, and I got my spacing regulated again. All right, a few seconds. Now, here is one of the little idiosyncrasies you may find is if it doesn't plot right away, no problem. I'm not sure if that's an issue with linking up with the security server or not. Every once in a while it seems like, oh, what's going on? It's a ton of, if that happens, no problem. Just go up here and click on a different, uh, like I clicked on the five minute back to the one, and that will typically instantly uh, change it, uh, you know, make it appear. I don't run in that too much, but every once in a while, especially sometimes if you're changing a font, I mean, I'm changing uh, symbols back and forth, sometimes it kind of gets a little hiccup. Um, and uh, I'm not sure what that is. I've talked to the programmer about it, and it just seems like something we'll have to work out in the future, but it doesn't seem to be a real major problem. Um, but I want to show you one last thing here, and this is, I personally like my indicators to take up the least amount of space as possible on my charts. And there's one thing you can do with your indicator to crunch it down just a little bit. And what that is, is you're going to go back into your indicator, double click it, open up, go to the common tab. You're going to notice here the fixed minimum is 0 and the fixed maximum is 1.7. If you change that to 1.5, what you're going to be able to do is reduce some of the space above the number up to that horizontal bar right there. Now, Notice how I've, it's, it's crunched it down just a little, in which case you can now move that horizontal line down even further. And of course the font can be even made to be smaller than this if you need it to be even more compressed. So there it basically is. Um, you've seen everything, and it's not much, a whole lot more to say other than I would have created it to come uh, just out of the box at 1.5, but again, I'm not sure if it's an architecture issue with actual MetaTrader or what the case, but for some reason I wasn't able to just build it so that it defaulted to 1.5. Plus, for a lot of people, they may want this font to be a little bit bigger anyway, in which case 1.7 is perfect spacing. So there you go. You have your, you have your uh, time hour shift, bar interval, bar interval, time mark shift, font size, and color. And uh, that should do the job for you. So um, you can apply this on as many charts, of course, as you want, as many, as many computers as you want. As long as you've sent me the computer ID for that computer, uh, it will work. And... Um, any updates that I do in the future, I'll send you and give you the opportunity to just automatically update. You can just virtually do that automatically. But um, I can't imagine at this point uh, I don't have any plans. So there you go. hope you really like using this, and I hope it makes your life a little bit easier than always having to look at the clock and figure out how many hours shift, depending on what time of year it is, et cetera, et cetera. And, of course, you can place indicators uh, um, after this. You don't have to have the um, actual time right down on the x-axis. You can go ahead and put an indicator underneath it if you like. Uh, I actually like using it that way a lot. Uh, because it makes, in a sense, the actual MetaTrader, it is irrelevant when you're just using local time. So might, might as well just put it up on top. I don't know why MetaTrader just has never incorporated this, but uh, we now have a solution. Okay, so again, thank you for your business. I hope you uh, loved using this indicator. And uh, any questions, by all means, uh, you can always feel free to uh, send an email to support at mt4timeaxis.com. All right, prosperous trading to you.